Hello everybody and welcome to another A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough video. This video is focusing on DNA, which is part of the biochemistry topic. If you want to have a go at these questions yourself before watching the video, feel free to download them as a PDF from the description. When I'm going through this video, I'll be showing you the thinking behind the question in blue and the answers that are going to get you the actual marks, they will be written in green so you can tell which bit is my description and which bits are the answers. Before we take a look at the actual questions, I just wanted to remind you that most courses give you some extra information in a booklet along with the periodic table and spectroscopy data. For instance, this is the data sheet for AQA exams, and on this sheet you can see that we've got a lot of biochemistry data, and we've got the heme group at the bottom, which is probably relevant for transition metals as well, but you can see we've got the amino acids, or six amino acids listed here, but for DNA-related questions, we want the information about the bases, and we want the information about phosphates and sugars, which really we're talking about the phosphate and the deoxyribose sugar. Very rarely is glucose relevant. You need to be able to recognise these features, so you need to be able to recognise the phosphate and the deoxyribose sugar and any of the bases, using the data sheet usually, and you need to work out how they fit together, and that's one, what I'm going to hope to show you through answering these questions on this video. If we just zoom in on those four bases, and it's a bit annoying on the data sheet that I just showed you because the adenine and the thymine were at different ends of that line of four bases, the guanine and the cytosine were next to each other. These are complementary base pairs. And what that means is the two polymer strands of the DNA's double helix connect to each other through these base pairs. Now the base pairs themselves connect to the deoxyribose sugar through this N atom here, and they all actually do it. This data sheet was very nice. It shows how the base connects to the deoxyribose sugar. So it's always through that N to H atom, while the H leaves and we get a condensation reaction as the nitrogen connects to the sugar. And then what we've got is we've got complementary pairings between the adenine and the thymine. They form two hydrogen bonds between their molecules. And so what happens is we get a hydrogen bond forming between this group here and between this oxygen atom in a neighbouring thymine. And then the other hydrogen bond comes from this nitrogen to hydrogen group and this nitrogen atom. And if you wanted to, you could actually work out that this must be a lone pair on that oxygen atom being the beginnings of the hydrogen bond and that finishing at one of the hydrogens on this adenine molecule. And then similarly, a lone pair on this nitrogen will be forming the hydrogen bond which will be coming in on that hydrogen. And then we get the same thing with the guanine to cytosine, only this time we've got a different number of hydrogen bonds. We've got a hydrogen bond forming from this NH2 to this oxygen, and then we've got another one forming from this NH to this nitrogen, and then we've got another one forming from this oxygen to this NH2, giving us a total of three hydrogen bonds between these two base pairs. In this first question, we're shown the picture of two complementary strands of the DNA double helix structure. And you can see this is one of the strands down here, and this is another strand like so. And here are the bases in the middle through which those two strands are joined. And the first question tells us that we need to draw all of the hydrogen bonds between the complementary strands shown in this diagram. And they tell us that we should use dashed lines to show the hydrogen bonds which means if we use solid lines, we'll get penalised. And then they tell us that we don't need to show any lone pairs on the atoms where the hydrogen bond begins or any of the partial charges of either of the atoms in the hydrogen bond. And so what we need to do is we need to look at these pictures and we need to recognise this as the base thymine and this must therefore be adenine, and it is. And we need to remember that thymine and adenine form using two hydrogen bonds, and then it's just a case of adding them in this position. And because we're drawing a dotted line, we don't even need to say where that hydrogen bond begins. And so just dotted line from here to here, and another dotted line from here to here. And that will get us one mark for those two hydrogen bonds. And then underneath, 
this is this is the cytosine base and this is the guanine base and we need to remember that that has three hydrogen bonds and they would be in this position this position and this position and that would be necessary for that second mark in part a part b asks us to draw a ring around each of the components that make up the cytosine nucleotide and so we need to first recognize and, and identify the cytosine base, and that's this one here, as we've already said. And so clearly we're going to be drawing a ring around this. We need to be encompassing the deoxyribose sugar, and we need to be drawing around one of the phosphates. And you need to remember that when we draw the nucleotide, we include the phosphate in the upper position. So that means this one here. And so the ring can be either side of the top oxygen, so that means this one here, that's not important, but what is really important is that we include this phosphate rather than this one, because that's the convention that the nucleotide flows like this, with the phosphate above the sugar as being part of that nucleotide. And you would get one mark if you correctly circled this deoxyribose sugar and this base, and you would get the second mark for correct, correctly spotting that it's the phosphate above that needs to be included. And then finally it says, state the meaning of the term complementary when it is used to refer to the DNA strands, and that means that the strands must have base sequences that match A to T and C to G, and that's all you need to say to get that mark. In this next question about DNA, we dive straight in with questions about the complementary nature of that DNA base pairing. So remember that means the A must go to T and the C must go to G. And so what they ask us to do in part A is to show the correct sequence. So if this top strand goes A, C, G, T, C, that means that position number one must be the T base pair because it goes A to T and it goes C to G and G to C, T must go with A and C with G. And all of that is necessary for the one mark. Then part B asks us to deduce the total number of hydrogen bonds formed between those five base pairs in the strand. And it's given us four options, 10, 12, 13, or 15. And so we have to remember that A and T have got two hydrogen bonds between them. So that means there will be two there and there'll be two there and C and G have got three hydrogen bonds between each of those pairs. So that will be three, that will be three, that will be three. So in total, that makes 13. So we need to tick this box. And finally, it says base A is part of a nucleotide in the DNA strand shown in the figure above. And so that means shown in this diagram up here. And we've been told that a nucleotide contains a 2-deoxyribose molecule, which we find on our data sheet. An incomplete 2-deoxyribose molecule is shown here. So here it is. And we've been told to complete the structure to show the nucleotide that contains base A. And we're told that we should represent base A by the letter A, which is very nice and generous of them. And so what we have to do here is we have to look at the data sheet and find out what the deoxyribose sugar looks like. And if we fill that in, this is the completed structure of our deoxyribose. And then what happens is the base A moves in in this position here. And remember I said that the bases and all the bases had that N to H group. And what happens is the H from that N to H bonds with the O to H group here and leaves as water. And then it's the nitrogen part of the A base that connects in this position. But actually for this question, we don't even have to draw the structure of base A. We just need to replace this O to H group with the letter A. That's what we've been told to do. And then when we're making a DNA chain, what happens is this OH group and this OH group are connected to phosphates. And so what we need to do to finish this diagram to show a full nucleotide is we need to get rid of this hydrogen from the bottom alcohol and show a trailing bond like so working our way downwards. And then we need to do the same thing up here, only this time for this hydrogen, we need to remove it. But then instead of having a trailing bond going like so, we need to add the phosphate group in. 
and then we get the trailing bond from that top oxygen of the phosphate, not the negative oxygen, the oxygen which has only got a single bond to the phosphorus and no charge. That's where the DNA chain grows from in the top position. So it grows from up in this top position, but also down in this bottom position as well. And so all of that is necessary for two marks. And so you get one mark for the correct deoxyribose sugar, including the base A in this position. And then the second mark is for the top phosphate joined to this carbon atom. And remember, what we lost was we lost that oxygen to hydrogen and we lost the H from the phosphate in another condensation reaction. Remember, in biochemistry, if you are in any doubt about the type of reaction that's happening, typically it's condensation or hydrolysis. And in all of these cases with DNA, it is condensation. OK, that's all we need to do to get these four marks for this question. So that's the end of the video. Hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.